If you want to learn more about Juno Security, sign up for our Juno Security or Advanced Juno Security courses. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for the courses in the keyword search box. You can also see the complete Juno Security Learning Path at juniper.net slash learning paths. Now it's time for your Learning Byte. Welcome to our Juniper Learning Byte session. My name is Udo Steiniger, and I'm going to work with you through NET64 and NET46 on Juniper Asterix series devices. This is part one, covering the use cases for IP address family netting and NET64 in greater detail. The use of NET has a long history, and the two major use cases are its usage as a means to cover address depletion in IP version 4, and the other widespread reason to use NET is sort of for security reasons. NET has also found its way into IP version 6, where it can be used to hide public or private IP version 6 addresses, similar to IP version 4 netting with RFC 1918 address space. In IP version 6, there is a special address space that can be used for that matter named unique local address, which has been defined in RFC 4193. Please note, however, that EULA is kind of special in two ways. First, the reserved address space for EULA is FC00-7, where the 8th bit is the so-called local bit. A value of zero for this bit is not yet defined, while a value of one is. As a result, only the prefix ft00-8 is in practice usable. The other dimension why EULA is kind of special is about the assumption on its use case. It was certainly never planned to be the IP version 6 counterpart of RFC 1918, where the designers originally planned to have RFC 1918 networks being connected to other networks or the internet in an indirect way. The original idea for EULA, however, was to have a unique address space for networks that are never connected by purpose, like labs, military entities, and so on. Nowadays, there are three basic NAT scenarios out there. NAT 4.6, which translates connections from IP version 4 to IP version 6 destinations, NAT64, that translates connections for IP version 6 clients that need to connect to IP version 4 servers, and ultimately NAT within the same address family like NAT66 or NAT44. Of course, all those scenarios can be hierarchically mixed and stacked. For example, NAT444 or NAT464. In this video, however, we only cover NAT64 and NAT46. Before we begin with any configuration, there are requirements on the Juniper S6 devices that need to be configured in order to make all subsequent configuration work. First, we need to enable IP version 6 flow mode since IP version 6 runs in packet mode out of the box. And second, we need to enable proxy ARP or proxy NDP in those cases when a translated IP version 4 or IP version 6 address falls into the network range of the configured interface IP. NAT64 performs IP version 6 host to IP version 4 host translations. The IP version 6 host on the left hand side with the IP address 2001 colon db8 colon colon 10 sends a packet to Tuwati server with the destination address 2001 colon db8 colon colon a, which actually is just an IP version 6 address in the same sub subnet that the SRX is configured to listen to using proxy NDP. The SRX NAT64 configuration then translates both the source and the destination from the IP version 6 address to the IP version 4 addresses that we see on the right hand side. The IP version 4 server replies to the IP version 6 host reflexive NAT IP address. The SRX device performs then reverse translation back to the originating host. 
please remember the order the first packet of a flow is being handled by the flow module. Static NAT and reverse static NAT is handled before destination NAT, forwarding and policy lookup. Destination NAT is also handled before forwarding lookup and policy checking, while only source NAT is done after a forwarding lookup and security policy checking. The order of operation of the flow module leaves us with two important rules of thumb. When we do a transformation of the destination IP address of a packet, regardless if we're using static or destination NAT configuration elements, then it is imperative to use the transformed IP address in the security policy which permits the traffic. In contrast, when we do a transformation of the source address, then we have to reference the original source address in the security policy matching criteria. So let's jump into a NAT64 configuration example. There are some considerations that we can make how to configure our NAT64 setup. There are two possible ways. First is transforming the destination and the source IP using static NAT configuration. Or the second way, moving forward is transforming the destination IP using static NAT and the source IP using source NAT. I'm going to move forward using the second way. First of all, I have configured the IPv6 flow mode, rebooted the Asterix device, then set up the security zones Trust and DMZ with the two interfaces put into it and also configured proxy and NDP on interface GE004 with the proxy NDP IP 2001 colon DB8 colon colon A. The next step is the static NAT configuration to transform the destination IP version 6 address into an IP version 4 address. For that matter, I've created an, an rule set under added security NAT static called NAT64 destination transformation. The traffic direction is from zone trust. And within that context, I have created a an, an rule where the destination match criteria of the destination IP version 6 address, which is actually the proxy NDP configured IPv6 at address. And then as an action, I created a static NAT2 and prefix that is translating the IP version 6 address into an IP version 4 IP. In order to complete the header rewriting, we also need to transform the source IP for the packet from IP version 6 into IP version 4. As you remember, there were two ways of moving forward, either using static NAT or using source NAT. I'm going to show you the source NAT configuration that I've done using an address pool called translate source IP, which contains the transform source IP address. Then I've created a rule set called NAT64 source transformation. And within that rule set, I've defined the traffic direction from zone trust to zone DMZ. And within that context, we have um, a rule set with the match criteria that references the original source IP version 6 address and the rewritten destination IP version 4 address. And for that match criteria, I have applied the source NAT pool. After having rewritten the source in the destination IP addresses from IP version 6 into IP version 4, we need to have a security policy that reflects that in order to make the connection work. Remember for the source address, we need to match on, an, on the original header. So we need to match on the IP version six source address before the transformation. And for the destination IP address, we need to match on the transformed IP version four IP address. Application can be any, and the action is then that permit. Assuming that our configuration is correct, we can verify the NAT translation from IP version 6 into IP version 4 with the command show security flow session, 
we see here in the second line that we have an source IP in IP version 6 trying to connect to an IP version 6 destination IP and the answer packet is coming back from an IP version 4 source IP to an IP version 4 destination IP. Okay, now that we are done with the theoretical part, let's jump into the live demo of what we've just tried to accomplish. Okay, in our practical demo, we want to show that our setup with the IPv6 host on the left-hand side, an SRX device in, in between, and an IPv4 server being in the DMZ zone can actually connect to one another. I've prepared two terminal windows. On the left-hand side is showing the SRX device and the right window shows or represents the, the actual client sitting on the left-hand side. So let's check out the basic configuration for the SRX device. And here we're going to start with the interface config. Show interfaces. Set. So we see that we have two interfaces configured, GE002 being in the DMZ zone and having an IP version 4 address, and GE004 being in the trust zone with an IP version 6 address. The next configuration part is the security zones that we're going to check out with show security zones display Z. And we see that we have two zones configured, a trust zone with interface GE004 being bound and a DMZ zone with the interface GE002 being bound. The next command we're going to use to verify that we have enabled IPv6 flow mode. I've also rebooted the SRX device for our demonstration purposes. Proxy NDP for NAT is needed because our map IP version 6 address for the remote IP version 4 server, namely 2001 db8 colon colon a, is coming from the same subnet as the Asterix's interface IP in the blue network. So you see, I needed to configure proxy and NDP on interfaces GE004. Now that we have completed the basic configuration of our Asterix device, let's jump into the NAT64 configuration. In order to, to do that, we need to check out the static NAT config for the transformation of the destination IP address from IP version 6 into IP version 4. So we're matching here on the destination address that we have used for the server, that is 2001 colon db8 colon colon a, and we are applying on that match rule an action of a um, static NAT into 192.168.2.1 slash 32. The second part for the transformation of the source address, we're going to check out our source NAT config with show security NAT source. And we see that we have a context here from zone trust to zone team Z with a rule set that contains two match criteria. The original source address from the um, IP version 6 host and the destination address reflecting the transformed address into IP version 4. For packets that are matching these two criteria, we are applying the source NAT pool called xlate source IP, which contains the single IP version 4 address 172.20.66.1 slash 32. And finally, we are going to check out our security policies with show security policies. And we have a simple policy here with a context from zone trust to zone DMZ containing one policy matching on a source address of any, or actually it could be IP version 6 any, and a destination address of any IP version 4 to make clear that we are having a policy that matches here in the direction of into IP version 4 
and the third match condition application any, which just reflects that we could use any application. And finally, we have an action type of permit. Finally, I want to demonstrate that our configuration of NAT64 actually works by pinging from the IPv6 host in the Blue Network to the mapped IPv6 address for the server on the orange DMZ network. We're doing so by doing a ping to 2001 colon db8 colon colon a, which is the mapped IPv6 address for the remote hand server from the routing instance VR101 in our example and limiting our pings to three packets. We see that we see some results here. On the asterisk, we want to check out the contents of our session table. And we see that we are getting a packet coming in from GE004 with the source address of 2001db8 colon colon 10 and the destination address of 2001 colon db8 colon colon a and the return packet coming from the actual server 192.168.2.1 and the destination IP for the answer packet is the source IP address that we have configured for the source NAT of our NAT64 config, namely 172.20.66.1. So now that you've seen that our NAT64 config is working successfully, let me take the chance to thank you for watching this video. Please check out part two on NAT46. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.